The following is a production of WEGL 91.1 FM. That ball is gone. It's a walk-off home run for Stephen Williams. WEGL Sports. The Tigers are headed to the College World Series. Where every touchdown of Game. They're not going to keep him off the field tonight. Holy cow. Live. And welcome to South Extra Point here on WEGL 911 and WEGLFM.com. Hello, everybody. It is your handsome, stunning, beautiful, talent, award winning host, Jared Dillon. And joining me for whoever it may be is Davis Carroll, Alex Houston, and Jack Hart. Davis, you were telling us the internet problems have been fixed. I told you to be a lot more forceful with them, but you were not. I'm disappointed in they you. They were I'll nice. You know the that. lady I went to, she complimented my hair. So why would I be mean to her? Well, we can also tell that she's also blind. Uh, wow, so, wow. yeah. Cool. Uh, but other than that, how are you doing this fine morning? Doing all right. Just a little tired, like always. But I need you to wake I up. Did, whatever you got to do. I'd be here instead of sleeping in. So. You know, whatever you got to do. Wait, we're all here, okay? We're all I'm here. I'm not saying I'm not here. I'm just saying. I'm, whatever. Alex, how are you doing this fine morning? You know, it's going. I mean, you say, Alex, you say, I'm tired. Look at that man. Don't well, that's because eyes, I've lost all hope in Alex, to be quite honest. At least, at least when I'm tired, I'm still a little energetic most of the time. I need y'all to pick it up. Come on. Alex, how you doing today? You know, I mean, catching the Monday Night Football last night was pretty exciting. I mean,. I'm sad because I almost won my fantasy game, but then Kamara just decided to, you know, Yavin Kamara. Good game anyway. And, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. Do you need a hug? No. It sounds like you need a hug. No, I'm good. Okay. Well, you'll let me know when you need one, okay? And then I'll tell you no. Jack Hart. Right. Jack, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing all right. Can you hear me good? Does my voice sound okay? Uh, voice? Sure. Your microphone, that's a different story, but we'll handle that another time. Dang. But other than that, the Braves, they got a big win, didn't they? Yes, big win against the, the Dodgers last night in the top of the night. Well, we'll be talking about that as the show goes on. We'll be leading it off with Major League Baseball, then turning over to Monday Night Football and some NFL news. Then we'll head over to the NBA right quick before we head over to college football to end off the show. Just a reminder, if you want to catch up on all the shows, you can always go to our YouTube channel where every single episode is up at 3.45 Central Time in a premiere that you can watch live. Or you can catch the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any of the podcast hosting sites that you may be able to find so as we open up the show uh did a, some a little bit of reworking here and there and i was able to, to figure out how you guys can also because for the longest time you, you you weren't able to hear what i hear so it was always weird uh but now uh now that you can it's time to bring some energy and life back into this show and i'm talking about the heydays of the extra point where we were always laughing and playing and crying and i was beating people up and i was threatening people usually when i was a lot more violent things were a lot more fun at least from my perspective i don't know about you about you guys but for me it's a lot more fun and i thought to myself i was like jared i was talking to myself actually you know because i am a little bit paranoid i was like jared how can i make this show I kind of get back to where we were. And then I realized what it was missing. So, let's open up every show like we always do. And that is with... Step back. Kiss myself, Neil Fox. Woo! Wake up. It's the fast break. Your top stories this morning. 
your top stories this morning. The Braves take a 1-0 series lead as they beat the Dodgers 5-1 as Riley, Albies, and Azuna go yard. Margot also went yard for the Rays, and he also left the yard on a spectacular catch as the Rays win 4-2 and take a 2-0 series lead on those Astros. Just a side note from me, personally, screw the Astros. The LA Lakers put their title parade on hold due to the pandemic after defeating the Miami Heat 4-2 to win the NBA title, and they'll have the parade whenever it's, I guess, safe to have it. The Falcons owner, Arthur Blank, is mum on Matt Ryan's future, just saying pretty much just gotta wait it out and see how it's gonna kinda break down. Dak Prescott had successful surgery after his injury against the Giants on Sunday, and Jerry Jones says he is still the future for the Dallas Cowboys, Dak currently playing on a franchise tag. The Baylor football program, get this, had 28 positive cases of COVID as the game versus Oklahoma State is postponed for this weekend. The whole athletic department is looking at 32 total cases, so a major outbreak at Baylor, and they're saying that it may be linked to a false negative that happened on the team, and then it eventually spread across the program. There's also another game that's also postponed, and this time it's in the SEC, as Mizzou versus Vanderbilt is postponed, as the Commodores have positive tests as well. So those are the first two uh, big dominoes to fall for this weekend, one of them being the SEC, getting their first, uh, I guess, positive case uh, game, and seeing how they'll deal with it as well. That game is supposed to be uh, rescheduled for December. And finally, Hours after coming in at number 14 in the AP poll, the Auburn Tigers, something weird happened with them, they dropped to 15. That all was because of an error by somebody uh, who was voting in the poll and forgot to put BYU. And that does it for the Fast Break presented by WJ Sports, where every game lives. I'm a little bit rusty on that. Usually I end right when it ends, but uh, you know what? I'll keep working on it. So, let's go ahead and start with Major League Baseball. The Braves, 5-1 win over the Dodgers. They took down the Dodgers. And it was, a, I mean, it was a pretty good game all the way to the ninth inning uh, when the Braves finally exploded uh, for a couple of runs. But they do take game one. And usually, I mean, it's always good to take game one because you're one step ahead. So let's get it from the Braves fan, Jack. What does this game one win mean for Atlanta? Well, Jared, it means the first game one win for the franchise since 2001, so that's pretty huge. First NLCS win, rather. Um, also the first game one win of a series since two weeks ago before that, 2001. So uh, Braves yet to lose a game in the postseason. Pretty unbelievable considering their, their past history and recent years. And on top of that, uh, against a team that has – bounce them from the playoffs so many times it's it's hard to keep track of uh, back in 2013 and uh a few other times as well so this is a, a arrival of the raves uh in in postseason land and so it it feels good i mean this is a team that built similarly to the braves with a couple good aces on the bump and then a lot of power in the outfield and the infield to boot so it's it uh it's a very even matchup, and that was evident that both starters did extremely well. The game was deadlocked 1-1 going into the ninth, and by uh, by some by some type of miracle, the Braves were able to get the heart of their lineup to the plate in the ninth and explode for four runs. So um, they got the offense right when they needed it after it looked like the offense wasn't going to be in the show. So very good if you're the Braves looking forward and very good that you were able to shut down this uh, Dodgers roster that's killed you in the past, uh, especially two years ago. Davis, Alex, what are kind of the big takeaways from the Braves' game one win over the L.A. Dodgers? I only got to watch about innings like last of the fourth to about the ninth. And I got to say the pitching was really strong. Some good pitching from both sides. Kept it pretty close throughout, but obviously the Braves got a good game out. I think it's going to be a good series with because Clayton Kershaw is starting the next game, I believe, with uh, Walker Buehler getting the start last night, and then Max Fried as well did pretty well on the bump. So I'm pretty excited to see how this series goes. I can confirm that'll be Anderson and Kershaw 
Kershaw for the Braves, Anderson on the mound. I'm sorry, Kershaw for the Dodgers, excuse me, and Anderson on the mound for the Braves. That should be a good duel as well. Alex? I mean, I got I to agree with Davis on that one. I think it could be a very good series. I'm going to be honest. I actually expected the Dodgers to win game one, but then again, I know very little about baseball. So, And once I said when in doubt, pick the Dodgers last week, everybody on the extra point yelled at me. So clearly I was wrong on that one. Because, so. I mean, the Dodgers are my World Series teams. I mean, I don't put it past me that I, let, I yelled at you anyway because that's something that I do. Yeah, of course. Of course. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so the Braves – a big win over the Dodgers in game one. And then on the other side of the bracket, we have the Rays taking down the Astros. And was the Rays early jumping on the Astros when Margot hit a three-run bomb uh, to center field. And from that point on, uh, the Astros was playing catch-up. And it's not like the Astros didn't have chances. I mean, they had 10 hits on the, on the day. Only came around with two runs, one of them in the ninth inning. And uh, I want to get the stat right quick because they left a lot of guys on base. Uh, I believe, let's see if I can find the Astros hitting. They left 11 guys on base. They were one for eight with runners in scoring position. The other one getting a hit is, is Diaz. So, I mean, Houston had their chances, but they just let it slip away. And, it, I mean, credit to... The Rays pitching staff, they got out of jams when they needed to. Uh, so the Astros, thank goodness, after annoying me as much as they did, are down 2-0. And I, I, I hope the Rays smell blood in the water. Don't jinx it yet, Jared. Look. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't actually jinx it. If any team would have a miraculous comeback just to annoy everybody, it would be the Houston Astros. So let's just... Pump the brakes. No, I I need to make sure that Houston does not make it anywhere near that World Series. I mean, I, mean, I don't like... even... I'll, look, I'm going to be honest. I mean, baseball... If we're talking about, like, my favorite sports, baseball's fourth, okay? I mean... I like the Cardinals. I like the roof of the Cardinals. I like the Yankees. You know, I always back the Yankees. But at the end of the day, like, baseball's kind of, like, in the rearview mirror for me. And... Even I'm invested in this Astros need to get out the World Series picture kind of thing. Like, that's, it's, it's just, I don't know. Give me the Braves. Give me the Dodgers. Give me the Rays. Give me the A's. White Sox. Anybody. But not these chuckleheads. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Chuckleheads who are out there cheating. Okay. It's just, I don't know. Any other thoughts on the Astros uh, losing to the Rays yesterday? Margot not only made a offensive performance, but also an ex- probably the most spectacular catch of the postseason, uh, putting life and limb at risk and vaulting over the right field wall to come down with a foul ball. He did. Uh, one that was kind of scary because – I think nobody realized how deep that drop was until it kind of went over. And there wasn't a lot of space to maneuver. So, like, you know, his knees hit the hit the wall and everything. Uh, but he's all good to go. So, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely the MVP of Game 2 for the Rays. And they look to keep it up today. Uh, now, the Rays and Astros, the, the, the two games switching places, you'll see the Braves and Dodgers first. They're on at... 6.05 Eastern, 5.05 Central. So they're going to be a real early game. Uh, like I was talking about, Kershaw's on the mound for the Dodgers. Anderson on the mound for the Braves. And then at 8.40 Eastern, 7.40 Central, uh, you have the Rays and the Astros squaring off Tampa Bay to take a commanding 3-0 lead. Uh, and if Tampa Bay wins that game, uh, the, the Devil's knocking on the door for the Astros. And... Uh, you can all but say that series is probably wrapped up. Um, anything else on baseball? Or oh, I will say this on baseball too. Yesterday, the Chicago White Sox parted with their manager after uh, getting back to the playoffs for the first time, which, you know, I don't have my ears to the ground on Chicago White Sox, you know, club news. But I feel like, I don't know, it was kind of an odd move, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not having the best. 
best season they've had since their World Series reign yeah. in 2005. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. They, I didn't read too much into it. It said, The article said parted ways, so maybe it was like a mutual thing. I have no idea. But uh, I just thought that was kind of weird that, man, you, you, you think that kind of guy... It's like a... It's like a when... Um, I'm trying to remember. I think didn't the, didn't the Titans part ways with their coach after you like got you to playoffs or something like that, and it was like kind of yeah, weird. Got to the playoffs and won a game. And then uh, he they were like, you know what, this is good right here. We're just gonna part ways. The Titans I mean, part ways with their coach doing that, but damn, Adam Gase <laughs> keeps finding jobs, and I don't understand how this is a thing. As far as I could tell based on what I read about the White Sox uh, manager, it seemed very much like the belief was that that manager took them as far as they could go. And now they, or as far as he could take them, I mean, so now they need somebody else to take them to the next level, a la maybe like Jason Kidd with the Bucks when like, you know, they were terrible and Jason Kidd got them to the playoffs, but that was about as far as you knew that team would go with Jason Kidd. No, just, wait, 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 wait. I want to stop for a second. Did Jason Kidd get the Bucks to the playoffs, or did the Bucks just will themselves to the playoffs in spite of Jason Kidd? I mean, either way, the matter was, despite getting to the playoffs, they knew that was as far as they could go with him as head coach. Same thing applies. So now the White Sox had a much better season by comparison because the Bucks were at bottom of the of the lead of the Eastern Conference team in the playoffs. They were, you know, an eighth or seventh seed, but you know that's. People were like, that's about as far as we can go. And then, I mean, you know, what happened with the Nets, it was clear that's about as far as they can go with him. I don't know. I, I find teams that make this kind of move weird uh, when they're like, hey, we got we got to the playoffs for the first time in oh so many years. And now, oh, well, this is the farthest you can take us. Even though you only have one year to do it, this is the farthest you can take us. And uh, we're going to go find somebody better. It's like, okay, well... I don't know. Seems kind of weird. It seems, it's, it's like it's like going on a third date with some girl, and then she's like, "Well, this is as far as you can take me, so this this is it." And then that's kind of how that ends. I'm not speaking from personal experience, if you're wondering. Anything else on Major League Baseball? That's it. I'm out. All right, let's move on to Monday Night Football. The Saints, they, uh, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, but the Saints did win the game. Uh, as far as I know, they didn't fight each other during the game, uh, but they were fighting back from a deficit for most of the game. And they finally won in overtime by a score of 30 to 27. Uh, after, uh, a game clinching field goal and then a stop uh, on the defense just coming up oh so short at midfield the Chargers did about half a yard and uh the Saints three and two the Chargers they are the best dang one of four team I've ever seen in my life I'll tell you that much uh as Justin Herbert has proven that he's gonna be a good quarterback uh when this is all you know when when, when all this dies down and you know they get back to like a regular season there's no pandemic and there's crowds and he he deserves a standing ovation for what he's done, uh, just stepping in and filling to this role as a Chargers quarterback. I have to say, I mean, yeah, he's not only been thrown into the starting position, he's been thrown into playing against Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, and Drew Brees in his first five games. Pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah I know that you, you you sent me that graphic where it was like. Most NFL touchdowns thrown that they showed on Monday Night Football. And you got Breeze, Brady, and Manning all with like 500 plus. And then it's just Justin Herbert with his nice you know, little old picture and just a seven on there. Like, okay, way to way to compare that guy to the three best quarterbacks of all time, you know. But Yeah, also most Monday Night Football touchdowns thrown by a rookie with four. But it was once again kicking that comes back to Hunt's hunt the Chargers as not only did they have a missed extra point that could have gotten them the win 
They also missed a field goal at the end of regulation, a makeable field goal after a great catch by Williams. Yeah. And I believe this is, I can't remember the exact number, but the Chargers are infamous for losing games by like less than one possession. Or I say less than one possession, by one possession games. They're infamous for losing one possession games, and this was another one. They just don't know how to close out games. They really don't. And it's been plaguing them ever since the Phillip Rivers era. One possession games. Sucks. But they have a lot to be looking forward to in the future. I mean, I'll say this. It sucks for Tyrod Taylor because I don't know how you go back to giving him the starting job. I don't care if that man got, you know, stabbed in his lungs or not. Uh, It's hard to kind of go back to that. Uh, What do we think about uh, Monday Night Football, Davis, Alex? Drew Brees is bad. Is he? Wow, that's that's what you took away from it? I mean, I, you know, it's it's interesting to me because, you know, for years people have been talking about, you know, Tom Brady was going to hit that age where he was just going to lose a lot of his ability. And I don't think it's really happened yet. I mean, Tom Brady did have like a a mental breakdown at the end of the Buccaneers game. Oh, yeah, no. No, he's he's not he's not nearly as good as he was, but even then the drop off is not as drastic. But with Breeze, there just seems to be just he he just looks like a completely different player sometimes, especially when it comes to throwing the ball down the field. I mean, I won't lie to you, yeah. He doesn't look as crisp as he did last season. Uh but is he bad? Is he losing the Saints games? I mean they only lost two, but is he losing them games? Is he a liability? That's fair. I would I would say he's not a liability yet, but I don't think he's you know for there was a lot of years where it was Drew Brees would win those games by himself because you know they had no defense and his offense was a bunch of average weapons really. Now his offense is I would say above average in terms of the weapons that he has, but I just it's just interesting. I mean you're not, I, you're not wrong when you say Drew Brees is not looking like his normal self because he's not. I mean, I know he still threw for over 300 yards and had a touchdown, and and, mm-hmm. and he had an interception as well. But I mean, you're not the only person to notice it. Yeah, Davis, what know. about you? Um, I don't really have anything that big. You know, the money badger missed the the field goal to win it for the Chargers. That is his nickname, by the way. Apparently, I thought that was kind of funny. Wow. Uh, Mike Williams did have a. Moss to get them into that position. So maybe Mike Davis is finally coming to his own after kind of struggling the past few years, whatever. What it what year is even is? This is second or third year. Who are you Mike, talking about? Mike Davis for the Chargers? Mike Williams. Mike Williams. I think I think you did Mike say Davis. Mike Davis. Did I? I went Mike. Yeah. I'm in Mike it's Williams. It's two different names. <laughs> it's all right. I got uh, Mike Davis on the mind because Alex won't trade him to me, but stop it. it <laughs> uh, Mike Williams is in uh, He's 26. From Clemson, so he's what in his what third year, I believe. Yeah, I think that's right. But yeah, I mean, it's the Saints being the Saints, Chargers. What are they now? One and four or something like that. Yeah, Chargers one and four. I don't think they're going to be making the playoffs this year. He's in his fourth season. Fourth season, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, with this expanded playoffs, you never know, man. Although nah, the, the, the the AFC North is kind of stacked right now, I'm not gonna lie. They're, they're the probably, the, say that again. Uh, bright future for the Chargers. That's all I got. They do. They do have a bright future. I think I don't know where I saw it, but somebody said uh, Justin Herbert's gonna be a heck of a quarterback for the next Chargers head coach. Just <laughs> insinuating that. Uh, I like Anthony uh, Lynn. You know. You know. Anthony Lynn's been a good coach, but it's like, I don't know. You know what? You're right. As, as long as Adam Gates can still have a job, Anthony Lynn should get at least one more year. So, anything head coaching wise is going to come up to Adam Gates because he's next to my radar. Dan Quinn, he gone. Okay? Adam Who Gates. Who's going to hire Dan Quinn? Because he's, he's going to get hired. Because Dan Quinn's a defensive minded coach, right? Yes. Even though his defense uh... kind of blew. Man, I mean, I don't know. To be quite honest, what? Jets? Question mark. Get Greg Williams out of there. He's dirty. I mean, the Jets defense does need a, a shot in, in, into something 
because they they are they are bad. Maybe Dan Quinn does go to New York when they get a new head coach. I, I don't think it'll be a bad move. The Giants. Uh, well, the Giants just got uh, isn't Jason Garrett the defensive coordinator over there or the? Oh yeah, he is. He is. Um. Wait, Jerry, did you say that the Jets are going to hire Dan Quinn as their head coach? No, defensive coordinator. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what he's... Heck, heck, even as head coach, he'd be yeah, better he, as Adam yeah, Gase. Yeah, he's better than Adam Gase. Yeah, but he doesn't deserve to be a head coach, period. At least he can get leads to blow. Adam Gase can't even do that. Yeah. Dan Quinn does not deserve to be a head coach. Adam Gase doesn't either. I agree. Worthy. On the worthy of being a head coach hierarchy, Dan Quinn is way higher than Adam Gase. There's like Dan Quinn... There's Jason Garrett. Jeff Fisher's in there somewhere. Jeff Fisher's in there somewhere. My toaster that doesn't work in the kitchen is right there. Then I'll put like Andy, and then I'll put I'll put uh, Adam Gase. Keep that man away from any head coaching position in the NFL. Ban him from Canada and the CFL. I don't care. Ban him from college football because the last thing he needs to do is ruin kids' futures because I assume that's what he would do. Ban him from high school football. He doesn't need to be around that either. The only football that that man could be around is near a soccer pitch. That's it. Wait. I think, I, I think the Jets will fire Adam Gase, but this offseason because they're trying to tank. And well, they know that he's the best person to tank with. That's kind of what they signaled is that they're not going to fire him uh, during the season. That's what they signaled. Now, obviously that, that changes easily, right? But I'm just saying, let's not forget that the glorious Adam Gase got hired as a head coach because he was a coordinator, offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos, where his team scored a grand total of eight points in the Super Bowl. But his Peyton quarterback Manning. was Peyton Manning. Exactly. Is that Peyton Manning connection? That Peyton Manning Papa John's grease rubbed off on Adam Gase, and he's just been irresistible since. I mean, he's like, you know, what's the craziest thing to me is that why does it feel like he's been a lot worse than his record actually is? Well, I believe who who said it yesterday? Uh, Adam Gates has more double digit losses than he does wins. Alex actually said the that. same amount of double digit losses he has wins. Oh, oh, we'll come back next week and then that that would be true. Okay, which is crazy because he has thirty career wins. Well, that should tell you a lot. He but did like, make the playoffs with the was, Dolphins. So, like last year, he was seven and nine. Once again, did the Dolphins make the playoffs in spite of Adam Gase? Or no, because no. of Adam Gase. He wasn't because of Adam Gase. They just did. I'm not. I'm not giving him any credit. Do you think he knows he's bad, or do you think he's like convinced he's good? He's like, well, I made the playoffs one time, so I can do it again. Well, there was that thing about him and Le'Veon Bell t- telling him to stop tweeting and talk to him. That did happen. That was funny. Well, Le'Veon needs to keep tweeting because I mean, that's, if, that's the only lifeline that we have to the outside players world. If talk to you, you have to realize that there's some kind of issue. Exactly. Right? Like, if, if he's able to, to filter out all of this stuff off of whenever he gets on his phone, like, I need whatever software he's using. I got a couple words I'd like to filter out as well. All I'm saying is, and I know that I'm not the first person to say it, but if I'm Trevor Lawrence and the Jets have the first pick and Adam Gase is still there, I'm not going. I'm not going to the Jets. I would that hold out. They got Sam. Oh, okay. Let's see how long that lasts. It was funny. The Jets GM was talking about how they don't know what kind of value Sam Darnold will get in a trade. They're actually floating around trading Sam Darnold. He's going to end up like Josh Rosen, which I don't even know where that guy is at anymore. Is he in Miami? No. He's somewhere else. I have no idea where he's at. I'm going to Google. I can't remember. Somebody figure out where Josh Rosen is at so I can call him up and console him and hug him and tell him that it'll be okay. Because that man's career is ruined. Josh Rosen was just Kellen Mond of the West Coast. You won't change my mind. Uh, well. He's on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers practice squad. A former number one pick on the practice squad for the Buccaneers? No, he was the number one pick. A first round pick. Yeah. Man. Who's Tampa Bay's backup? 
I mean, he's not good, so it's fine. But like, not the point. Like, even even if we didn't think he was gonna be a good quarterback, I mean, he had all the all the weapons and accessories that could be a decent quarterback. But because he went through so many offensive coordinators, uh, through Arizona and then Miami, and then Homeboy was just traded, just hey, get out of here. Went to Miami got benched immediately. I know he didn't play well, but I feel like he didn't even have a chance. It's like Deshaun, it's like Deshaun Kaiser, right? He got drafted by the Browns, and then in one game, he got hit really hard, had migraines, had to leave, and I haven't seen that boy since. I have no idea where he's at. He was on the Packers for one year, and now he's gone. he be two on the Bucks is Blaine Gabbert, Jared. Hey, Let's that's go Blaine! Homie, Blaine Gabbert, he's keeping it real. Uh, How about a bus? One time I went to a thrift store, I almost got a Blaine Gabbert jersey. I was so close to it. Why? It was there. It was, like, really cheap. He, uh, he's, he was on the Las Vegas Raiders from 2019 to 2020. Uh, Blaine, uh, Deshaun Kaiser was. Well, good for him. I, mean, I don't Nathan, know if he's still on it. Nathan Peterman's on the Raiders team as well, so I don't know how much stock I'm going to put into that. That's a good point. He got cut on September 7th. Nathan so Peterman. Is a free agent. Nathan Peterman is the Adam Gase of quarterbacks, and you can't prove me wrong on that. Uh, let's head over to NFL news, hard NFL news. Uh, let's talk about Adam Gase because we're still talking about him. Uh, he's whoa, talk- whoa, 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 actually, 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 is Dwayne Haskins the Adam Gase of quarterback? He's just bad, but some people still think he's good. <clears throat> Alex. Of, um, he's just straight buns, but people still think he's worth giving a shot. Davis, you know, You're every too day I come on this show, and I hope just this once you won't sound like a complete idiot. And yet, here we are, again. Wait, is you he your third string quarterback right now? Because I think he is. Yeah. He is. So he must not be that good. Y'all going to trade him anyway. So. I'm going to let y'all handle this. this. Nobody actually wants to hear this. Jack will eventually leave the screen if we get into this too much, as it happened last week and the week before. So I'll keep it simple. Did you watch the game on Sunday? Yes. The answer is no. No, you didn't. I know you didn't. Yes, I freaking did. I mean, I mean, if the Panthers game was on, I don't know why you'd be watching my team. You know, we have NFL Sunday ticket where I go, so we have like five games on at once. They can do five games at once. Yes, you have four on one screen. We have one on the ground on the computer. So Top you watch? A- I wasn't exclusively watching it, but I saw some of it. Yes. So when when the offense with their other two quarterbacks got a grand total of 117 yards, says was, "Yep, Dwayne Haskins definitely the problem." Really? No, I just know Dwayne Haskins is also part of the problem because he's bad. So the worst performance they've had all season is the one game without him. And, and how many? How have they done with him? Well, they got it, over. It hasn't been good. Yards. It hasn't been good, Alex. Y'all aren't even good with him. So don't be. Well, we were bad without him. So we're actually also bad with him. But less bad. But you're still bad. So. The, sam- the sample size is small. It's the small. Panthers were bad with Kyle Allen, or we we were bad with Cam Newton, but we are worse with Kyle Allen. So, which one do you think is better there, Alex? That would be Cam. So is Cam good on the Panthers? Was he good last year on the Panthers? I mean, he wasn't great, but he was better than Kyle Allen. He's also better than Dwayne Haskins. But my point is, just because he was better than the worst alternative doesn't mean he's good. That's not what I was saying. That is what you were literally saying. No. That's not. But again, Jared, was that what he, Jared and Jack was that what he was saying? Because I think it was. I think I'll, we should end this right there because that's what he was saying. I was trying to somehow segue this back to Adam Gase, but yeah, we're done, Alex, because he is the Adam Gase of quarterbacks. Adam Gase was talking about giving up play calling <laughs> duties for the New York Jets. I don't think it's going to help out his chances, but uh, Why does he that's play calling duties anyway. Who gave uh, him play calling duties? Himself. Who is his offensive coordinator? Who cares? No, like, who is the Jets' offensive coordinator? I have no idea. I could, you could bet a million dollars I'd never be able to name the Jets' offensive coordinator. 
It's probably somebody that we all do know, but I can tell you who it is. Let's see, it's Dowell Loggins. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Never mind. I'll take that back. He, his last job... It sounds like a country was... music store. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. What do you he say, oh, no, job. for? Uh, Office of Coordinator of the Miami Dolphins under Adam Gase. Oh, no. Oh, he brought his cronies with him. Sounds like Ron Rivera. Ugh. Ugh. That's not good. Well. So Adam Gates is just going to, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to do the Gus Malzahn. He's like, don't worry guys. I'm no longer calling the plays. And here is basically a carbon copy of me to call the plays. You know what? You know what? Actually, you know what? I get it. Actually, now that I think about it, Adam Gates is one of the smartest people in the NFL. He has managed to get hired twice. He's the cleaner. He's the guy that you hired to come destroy your franchise. And then you reset with the number one pick. Yeah, but the Jets were already bad. Yeah, but they wanted to reset. I don't know why, but if you want to be bad, if you want to tank, you just hire Adam Gase and he'll do the job for you. Who was the Jets coach before him? Was it? I don't know. For some odd reason, you said who the Jets had. This is how bad my memory is. Was you it said not who? Todd Bowles? You, you said who's oh, the Jets? Todd Bowles. You said who's the Jets head coach before him? And my first thought was Eric Mangini. That's how like far back my <laughs> mind went. Of two thousand six, two thousand eight, really. Yeah, that's that, that's how much of a gap there is in my memory. Where Eric Mangini was the first thing that popped in, in my uh, head. In the ESPN FBI's twenty thousand simulations yesterday, the Giants and the Jets both finished zero and sixteen in ten simulations. So that's so that's what, I'm for. what happens as the race to the bottom continues, right? What happens if both teams are? Winless. Who gets the number one pick? Is that um, gonna be? A, is it gonna be a coin toss? No, no. You go off the tiebreakers that get you into the playoffs. You just yeah. do it in reverse. So uh, the Giants. Right the Giants are the number one pick in all ten of those simulations. So okay. The Giants were the unequivocal worst team. That if, would if, that that is the most just thing to happen. You're zero and sixteen, but technically you end up with a second pick because you're not terribly the worst. I'm just saying, guys. Like we we make all these jokes about the Jets and whatnot. And, I mean, they deserve it. They do. But I think it's important Alex, to mention that since – let's see. Um, okay. In their history, they have had only two coaches leave their team with a winning record. Two. Eric Mangini? No, actually. Oh. Eric Mangini was two games away. One That's of them right. Al who was a coach for one year, went nine and seven, and the other is Bill Parcells, a coach for three years who went twenty nine. Yeah, wait, I'm talking about Rex Ryan didn't have a winning record. Rex Ryan was forty six and fifty. Dang. Oh, that's. Tough. But I mean, he had two AFC championships, so I mean, you well, might as well. True. But then he also um, was like, "All right, Mark Sanchez is not the thing, so let's get Tim Tebow, make him a fullback, and put him on the punt team." So, look, at least he tried. That's where he really loses a lot of, you know, that. Look, I just want to point out, and Jack knows this. These teams are so bad that the last team to win inside MetLife was an XFL team. I want you to keep that in mind. Yeah, that's bad. Go Guardians. Go Guardians. Rest in peace. We'll see you when you come back in a couple of years. They'll be back to get the next win in MetLife as well. Next year. Mm. (laughs) Hmm. And again, it also it also could be worse. There was a uh, Jets coach who took over the team after they went six and ten, and he followed that up with a three and thirteen season and a one and fifteen season. So, but he got them that top pick, didn't he? he? Did that's true. But who did they? Use? Let's let's see the nineteen ninety seven draft. Let's see who the Jets picked. Is it Chad Pennington? I'm thinking of all these old Jets uh, personnel and players. It might have been uh, Keyshawn Johnson. Oh wait, no, the Jets made a trade. They traded they traded uh they traded with St. Louis. Traded back Rest to the peace. eighth pick and got James Ferrier. Why He's... would they trade back? Because maybe, maybe uh number one pick. Yeah, maybe they didn't need it. Who did the Rams take? Uh the Rams took Orlando Pace as in the Hall of Fame offensive tackle. Oh. Maybe they already had a goaded offensive line, so I don't I su- also left on the board was Warwick Dunn and Tony Gonzalez. Alex, mm. hindsight's twenty twenty. They probably thought Sean Ferry or whatever his name was, it was good. 
Oh, Sean Ferrier was good. The problem is Sean Ferrier is not a Hall of Famer. Not play as far as I know. Yes, but they know can't guy. know that. What? They don't. They didn't know that. Actually, I, oh wait, I just googled Sean Ferrier and I can't seem to find him. Hold on. Yeah, I can't either. I got some doctors. Dang, they wiped that dude from the internet. How oh wait, no, it was it? James Ferrier. My mistake. James Ferrier. So he played with the Jets for all of three years. I can't even well, find he, James he Ferrier. How do you spell Ferrier? Well, while you guys continue your Google search, uh, some other quarterback news. The Falcons, they're mum on Matt Ryan's future. Matty Ice may be iced in Atlanta uh, if uh, they can find the right. Overrated. Oh, come on. Matt Ryan's not bad. Come on, guys. I said he's overrated. He's, I never said he was bad. You're going to have the gall to say overrated when the Panthers just beat Matt Ryan at home for the first time in like five years. Well, really? don't don't bring facts into this, okay? Oh, hold up, hold up, yeah, yeah. hold up. Hold up. Can't, that, can't be actually presenting numbers to Davis. What is that, know, what, like, why does that matter? He can still be overrated when he beats people. I never said he was bad. I said he was overrated. But he, I mean, I feel like he's just rated. Like, he's just – he's yeah. only a top 15 quarterback. If you talk to a Falcons fan, they act like he's a top five quarterback. Because the Falcons have not had a lot of good quarterbacks. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think Matt Ryan – I think, I think Matt Ryan's top ten, easy. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. No. Hmm. Do we want to go down the list right now? And I mean, n- name me 10 quarterbacks right. that are better than Matt Ryan. I'll go, I'll go down the list and we'll see. How about that? Wait, okay. get my okay, list so. out. Get my list I made. No, no, no. Not, not Davis's list. Davis's list is bad. It's good. It was a I don't know. It had Daniel Jones last, so I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Is Josh Allen better than Matt Ryan? Yes. All right. Well, um, he's, yes. I'll say right now, yes. I don't think anybody else in the AFC East is, even Cam. I don't think Cam is better. I wouldn't say. I would say Ben Roethlisberger is better than Matt Ryan. Ooh. I would say Lamar Jackson. Sure, Lamar Jackson's better. I would say that Philip Rivers is about equal to Matt Ryan, so maybe not. No, he's not. Deshaun Watson's better than Matt Ryan. Sure. Um, Patrick Mahomes better than Matt Ryan. Sure, yes. NFL MVP, right. yes. I would say Dak is better than Matt Ryan. Yes. Rest in peace, Dak. I'll see you um, next year. I baby. would say Aaron Rodgers is better than Matt Ryan. Yes. I don't know I what we're say, up to. I would say Tom Brady and Drew Brees are both better than Matt Ryan. Weren't you hating on Drew Brees earlier? I mean, no. It, okay, the thing for Drew Brees is just it's just alarming to see how different it is at times. Like his accuracy issues down the field, his arm strength issues. That's what it was. It's just because I remember when he was, you know, dropping 5,700 yards every season and nobody could figure out how to stop him. He was throwing 15 touchdowns a year to Lance Moore. Now it's... Don't you besmirk the name of Lance Moore. Hey, Lance Moore was great for like Why the three years Marquise that he was Colston? the star receiver. <laughs> I know. I, he had Marquise Colston lined up, but he mentioned Lance Moore. Lance Moore. Moore. <laughs> Not because... I, no, because, that, because Marquise Colston was a great receiver at time. Lance Moore, nobody knows about but yeah, Lance Moore was dropping all those touchdowns. Let's see, he had ten touchdowns in twenty in two thousand eight with the with the Saints. It seems, yes. But, I mean, I feel like I named ten quarterbacks. So let's say, how about that, Matt Ryan? I don't know. If we're talking about Matt Ryan, he's like he's like Matt, Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Nobody blames Matthew Stafford. What happened to Detroit? But That's good true. lord, he the man needs help. Look, they just got rid of Dan Quinn. Maybe they'll turn it around. I don't know. Thing is, Matt Ryan is thirty five years old, so it makes sense that they wanted to part, wanted to part ways. You know, you've got, I mean, you've got Calvin Ridley, a young receiver. You've got Todd Gurley, who is younger, I suppose. So, I mean, at this point, I think we follow like Todd Gurley, uh, the fourth fastest running back to reach fifty five or seventy five touchdowns. Which is crazy considering how injured he's been. He's... But yeah, Matt Ryan, 35 years old. I mean, it makes sense. You know, you trade him to like a team like maybe. Who would you trade him? You trade him to Washington. Matt Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, you just want a quarterback. I see how you're angling this. No, no, no. I'm, I mean, I'm saying if you're going to get rid of him, you like there are teams that just, you know, like, like what the Colts did. Like you just trade for just. Like I'm trying to think of a team that's in that position. Do you want Washington to give up their first round pick to get Matt Ryan? He's not worth a first round pick. Well, that's what they're gonna ask for. No, they aren't. They're giving up their franchise quarterback. They're not gonna ask for a first round pick. Okay, okay. Yes, they are. Second round pick. A second round pick. 
I guarantee you the Falcons, the first thing they're going to say is, we want a first-round pick. I, mean, I guarantee okay. you that's what they're going to say. If Sam, Darnold, if Sam Darnold is up for a first-round pick right now, then Matt, Manny Ice is too. But Sam Darnold's not going to get a first-round pick. Well, apparently, based on his value, he could well get a, could easily get a first-round pick. Not going to because no team's going to do that. If Bill okay. O'Brien was Sam still here Darnold's, in the NFL. Sam Darnold's good, man. Yeah, if Bill O'Brien was still here, he'd do Sam it. Sam Darnold's actually a quarterback stuck in a bad situation that could be good somewhere else. I said it. I think his memory just lapsed. I think Sam Darnold is a decent quarterback. Jack, what do you think? You've been you've been pondering for a little bit now. Matt Ryan is getting pretty old. He's not showing it as dramatically as Drew Brees is, but it's it's more subtle. I think I don't know. You definitely got to think the Falcons' window is closed. I mean, this year is definitely out. Do you think they can hold all the pieces together, first-year coach, next year? Because I don't. I think it was 2016 or bust for them when Matt had an MVP season, uh, throwing to all those guys. And, I mean, yeah, you got Calvin Ridley, you got Julio Jones. I mean, if you have all those weapons and you're still not able to produce, it's a sign of – I think he's been limited by play calling, frankly. He's been put into a lot of bad passing down situations, but – at the same time, you got to overcome that if you're going to be billed as an elite quarterback. I think, I think he he's fluctuated in and out of the top ten, but right now I think he's right about average. Which average is fine. You just need if average can't be the only thing, that can't be the best part of your team, you know. Yeah. And I think it's a good point that you brought up the play calling because I mean we all watched or I know you guys definitely watched the Panthers game on Sunday, and I was catching uh, clips of it because. We had on the other TV, and I mean, Todd Gurley's getting eight point six yards of carry, and you give him the football fourteen times. You make Matt Ryan throw it thirty-seven times, and I mean, Todd Todd Gurley every time he got the ball, he was carving up the Panthers' defense, and they were just like, "All right, now we're just going to stop giving him the football." And make Matt Ryan throw it thirty-eight times, which he didn't need to do. So that's a no. good point. Speaking of quarterback futures, Jerry Jones did come out and say that Dak is the future for the Cowboys after his injury. Uh, the timetable looking like right now after successful surgery on that compound fracture is four to six months. So he should be okay, ready to go by like the summer, even though they'll probably still monitor him and make sure that he's 100%, 100% before they do any team activities. But uh, you'll you'll definitely see Dak back uh, next fall uh, when the NFL season kicks off again. Uh, and... You gotta get credit. You gotta give credit to the Cowboys because they definitely have the best backup in the NFL uh, in Andy Dalton, who is now the starter. And I, I know we, we 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 make fun of Andy Dalton sometimes with the Bengals because like he was once again in a pretty bad situation. But he led that drive. Uh, now, yes, he did have that whoopsie daisy fumble, right? That was kind of like, oh no, what's gonna happen with the Cowboys this season? But then he led that drive, and I mean, he was throwing it on the money. I think the Cowboys are going to be – I don't I don't know if they're going to be fine, but they'll be okay with Andy Dalton, that quarterback. Jared, There's I that. thought you were going to say we got to give credit to the Cowboys for avoiding giving Dak the contract, and I was going to – I was like, no. Whoa. I mean, if anything, also, the, the Cowboys need to go out there and say, you know what, all right, here's the contract. Let's just sign this thing. Let's, let's just sign this thing and let's get it over with. But why would they do that? You can't let Dak walk. You just can't. I don't, ca- I, I don't care if he got injured. Dropped. I don't care if his value dropped. You, you don't you don't let him walk away. You know? I'm not saying cheaper than he was asking for significantly. I don't know because Dak could say no and just go somewhere else. I know he's not going to do that, right? But if the man thinks he's worth this much, this amount of money, right, then he's going to try. Your keeps cutting out. Well, you know. The way my internet works is that I put chickens in a little like cylinder thing, and they, and they run around. And I guess they're just getting tired. What in the world? It's not Never been to the boondocks, Alex. Yeah. What? My point is, Dak Prescott. Uh, he believes he's worth a certain amount of money, and that's part of the, that's the reason why they didn't have a a contract in place by the time the season started. He wants this much because he's worth this much. And the Cowboys thought he was worth this much. It didn't come to conclusion, and this is why 
This is why players push for guaranteed contracts and and things like that. Is because you never know when injury is going to happen. Nobody, no, nobody, nobody's at fault for what happened. Don't get me wrong, right? I'm just saying, with this injury, and as it's a very you know, don't want to be involved with that kind of injury. I, I mean, his market value has dropped significantly. So the Cowboys could get him for cheaper than they had. How much? How much is significantly? Because he went at thirty I mean, mil a year. Was, it ain't like he, it ain't like he dropped to fifteen million. He was asking for thirty five. So now he's 35. value. I would say dropped to maybe twenty seven, which that's. That is a significant amount of money per year. It's a decent chunk. I won't lie about that. That's 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 two players or one good player. For that I still think he'll get at the end of the day. He'll get at or near that number. He'll get near 30, 32, 33 million. I'm not sure if he will. Because he's young. It was, uh, as far as I know, successful, clean compound fracture. Easier to put back together. Four to six months. I mean. We've seen people go through worse, a la Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Two Gloves, right? Uh, Alex Smith. Alex Smith. And we've seen them come back. So, will they get the same amount of money? Maybe not. But Teddy Bridgewater, I thought Teddy Bridgewater just like severely tore his ACL. Did he actually break his no, leg? No, he tore his ACL and some ligaments from a non-contact. Movie. Okay, that's... I remember when he went down, It was I believe it was during our practice, and I remember there was no video of it, but uh, they kept talking, like, people on Twitter and other reporters were like, this is such a bad injury. And it took him a little bit to come back, too. It took him forever. So. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, here's a quarterback that I need to talk about. Philip Rivers. Okay. Ooh. Look, I was excited. I was like a kid in a candy store. I was like a kid on Halloween. And then, you know how there's always that one guy in your neighborhood that dresses up as Michael Myers and follows you around? No. Okay, maybe I go to weird neighborhoods, but he's just stalking you now. He's just wondering when he's going to strike. And for Philip Rivers, I mean, <laughs> Philip Rivers threw away nine points for the Colts this past weekend on a pick six and then a safety which he threw the ball it wasn't even like he got sack safety it was intentional grounding safety and uh he hasn't played the best this season to the point where uh the Colts have talked about or had to come out and say you know we're not gonna bench him but man He's uh I, I'm I'm seeing you why. Him, huh? Do you want them to bench Phil? No. Because what's the alternative, right? Jacoby Brissett. Which I mean, don't get me wrong. I like me some brisket, okay? But he's, he's from QBU, baby. He is from QBU. Is from Look, I, I got three quarterbacks. I got Phillip Rivers, I got Jacoby Brissett. And I got Jacob Eason. That's that's tough. And apparently Jacob Eason's actually doing really, really well. Nice. At least in practice. That's what all the beat writers are saying. They that he looks that he looks pretty good. Now we all know that doesn't translate to games, right? But he's looking solid. Yes, Davis. Why do they call beat writers? I never understood that. Because they're on the beat, you know? It's like a beat it's like a beat cop. Yeah. He's on the beat. You drop that beat, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You never heard that? Look, you you just like you I've get, heard on the beat, but like I'm you, talking about like the that because beat was another word for like job, you know. I always figured it was like like down and dirty. You like no working hard. No, Davis. You, I'm just you, saying that you young now, kids don't know what you're talking I about these days. Never use that word. Yeah, let's all listen like, to Jared, senior citizen. Look, it's not a common. I word. pay my taxes. Okay. I pay into my 401k. I pay into Social Security. All right? I should know what I'm talking about here when I say... He's a good citizen. Yeah, I'm a good citizen. I'm an upstanding citizen. Okay? I'm not locked into Gitmo like Alex is. I don't have internet problems like Davis does. I don't know if internet I'm is kind of unstable. What the heck? Okay. At least I'm good at COD unlike you. I admit that I'm bad at Call of Duty. You should play it so you can get good. No. All of you. 
You just want me to play because you're lonely. Yes, I, <laughs> I want someone to play. <laughs> I mean, I play with my other friend. But... Uh, but Philip Rivers is uh, yeah, he's. I I understand why Charger fans uh, were upset the last couple of years. I mean, at the end of the day, the idea that he was going to come in and you know make some drastic improvement. The Colts were already a decent team. They just needed a quarterback to put them out. And Jacoby Brissett did not turn the ball over as much as Philip Rivers does. Philip Rivers has five interceptions already. Jacoby Brissett in his last uh, season as a starter had six interceptions the entire year. But Philip Rivers completing 70% of his passes to Jacoby Brissett 60%. Philip Rivers can make those throws that'll win you games, but he'll also make a lot of throws that might lose you games. So that's the reality of the situation. And I think I think the Colts should consider trading up for a quarterback in the draft. But they already drafted a quarterback. We got Jacob Beeson. You know exactly yeah. what I mean. We got Jacob Beeson. Right now, they, either that or they should put Jacob Eason in for a year, basically tank for somebody, get a quarterback, and then go back to the playoffs. What makes you think that Jacob Eason's bad? I believe. What about Jacoby Brissett? I watched him at Washington. Jacoby Brissett has proven that he's good. Jacoby Brissett is average. They were 7-8 and eight with him last year. J- Jacoby Brissett needs to prove to me that he can make – he can lead drives. He can engineer offensive drives. That's all. I like That's Jacoby it. Brissett. No, I do too. But my point is, is that he couldn't – he's not explosive. The offense isn't as explosive with him at quarterback. He yeah, elevate Phil- the team. Phillip Rivers – Turns the ball over a lot, but he can lead a drive. You know what I'm saying? Philip Rivers is basically, I mean, Phil, you can give Philip Rivers the same assessment you can give, say, Brett Favre. You know, it's like he'll, he'll make some bonehead interceptions and turn the ball over, but when he leads a drive, he leads a drive. Same thing applies. Are we done with the NFL? Any other NFL news? Hey, Tuesday night football's tonight, boys. I'm excited. The Titans have not ruined the NFL completely yet. So. Get ready for Tuesday Night Football. As I believe this is the first Tuesday game since 2011, I want to say. I don't know. I found it the other day, but I don't feel like going back and looking at it. It was like some like Eagles-Vikings game, I think, where the game on Sunday got snowed out, so they had to play on Tuesday. I think Michael Vick was that quarterback. He, just look at the whole rosters. They're like, who are these, who are these guys? But that's neither here nor there. I had NBA news on the docket, but I'm going to skip that. Cause I need I need to go into college football. Is Dan Mullen an idiot? The NBA yeah. is over, Jared. Say that, say that again, Jack. The NBA is over. I the NBA don't know if is you over. Realize, but the Lakers' plane landed yesterday, and and uh, and Bonnie's still hiding in the closet. <laughs> Did J.R. Smith have his shirt on when the plane landed? That's most likely. Enough. I don't I don't really know. All right, uh, Dan Mullen. The swamp sell out bigger than football, let him in, right? Dan uh, Mullen is without question as an you idiot. Said, you asked Jared, is he an idiot? I mean, survey says yes on this one. I mean, it's just put it on the board. It. I don't know why exactly he's like. Oh yeah, we uh. The Texas A&M crowd really was a huge factor in the game. No, the fact that your defense is garbage was a factor in the game. Te- like, like, that stadium wasn't even filled. It wasn't. It was at 20% and, capacity. I mean, look, does, does he need the swamp filled to save based on the fact that he's a painfully average head coach? Maybe, but that's... I'll, I'll keep it real with A&M. It was, it was more like 20% the population of Houston in that stadium. Yeah. I don't know how closely they were following the turnstiles. Yeah, I mean, but, we, we, we've seen, I think, a and Georgia both stretching the uh, capacity numbers a bit, you know. All I'm saying is, damn Mullen. And he doubled down on it the other day. He said, I mean, I mean he pretty much said, we need, we need to fill up the swamp. This is This is a big game. And it's like, look, 
I don't want to get into politics, okay? I know what their governor did. I know their governor lifted the cap on bars and restaurants and that they're allowed to fill the stadium, okay? I get that. Just because somebody in power says something doesn't mean you're supposed to do it. Don't be stupid. Not to mention everything the Florida governor has said so far has been incorrect, so... Good old governor to there, but... Oops, said his name. I mean, look. Dan Mullen... Like, you, you guys watched the movie Shrek, right? You've seen the movie Shrek? Yes. <laughs> Where are you going with this? I mean, do you remember what Lord Farquaad said? Oh, yeah. Just... Some, of, some of you may die, but it is a sacrifice I am willing to make. That is what Dan Mullen is saying right now. That is very, very good. Dan Mullen is saying, I will sacrifice the masses to keep my job or, or for Florida to win this game. You know... I almost want them to do it just so they can lose. That'd be funny. All right, I got to fill it to win just so Dan Mullen can lose by 20 to LSU. I was thinking playing LSU. Like, are you scared? <laughs> I mean, I mean, the Dan, team, bro. Chill out. In fairness, Dan should not be scared because this LSU is no longer in the top 25, and Dan Mullen's like, what, 4 and 30 against teams in the top 25. So. <laughs> I hate Dan Mullen, man. <laughs> I mean, I've never I, like I tolerated him in Mississippi State, but now, now I can't he, stand him. He is a punk. He's like diet Kirby Smart, and I hate Kirby Smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the SEC East is the worst division in the history of sports. I is it? Him. I mean, uh, we, well, we don't we don't the NFC East currently no, no, happening. No, no, Jared. I mean, just I don't like them. They're good. I oh. just don't like. I will them. say, uh, I just saw a stat yesterday. Okay, um, since. 2013, I believe Georgia has played six AP top five opponents. Yeah. And? Is that it? Jeez. That's crazy. Bo Nix has played three. Oh, I thought, I thought that was going somewhere else. I see. I mean, you were talking about the I mean, it's. I mean, the fact that you can be an elite squad and get away with playing six uh, top five teams in the past four uh, six years—that's ridiculous. Yeah, no, that that okay. Yeah, I I didn't hear how long ago you said it was, but yeah, I mean, because like uh, Auburn's since played thirteen since Gus Malzahn was hired. Yeah, that's bad. That's that just shows how bad the East really. Yeah, that's jeez. And you're playing in the SEC, which I mean, you're bound to run into a top team eventually, right? Yeah. But granted, it's the East, so maybe not. And uh, I mean, it's just like this whole everybody points to Dan Mullen's struggles in Mississippi State. Like he's like, oh, it's Mississippi State. They had average talent. Like everybody forgets in 2014, they were, you know, on track to make it to the national championship and then he just choked against Old Miss. The same Miss team 40 that year. And he's like, nope, we're not going to win the Egg Bowl. I remember that game because I was like, man, this could be cool. No. That was that was that's the only game that's kicked the iron ball to nighttime in like the past fifteen years. The egg ball. SEC. Oh, yeah, that was, that game was at night. That you're right. Oh my goodness. The SEC picked up the egg ball as the as the, as the CBS game. Wow. And, that, and right. ever since they've never been the same. Iron Bowl was crazy, so they definitely should have had that on CBS. I mean, that was a great game. Speaking but, of uh, college football right now, let me go ahead and tell you the pick them for this week. It is number 14, BYU versus Houston. Number 8, Cincinnati and Tulsa. 17, SMU and Tulane. Kentucky at number 18, Tennessee. LSU at number 10, Florida. We got Ole Miss and Arkansas squaring off. Number 11, Texas A&M, Mississippi State. Number 5, UNC at Florida State. Number 15, Auburn at South Carolina. God help us. And the extra point game of the week, number three, Georgia at number two, Alabama. Alabama's defense is going to make Stetson Bennett look like a Heisman contender. Yeah, probably. So uh, odds are recently released for it. Apparently Stetson Bennett has the fourth highest odds to win the Heisman, which I think is hilarious. Look, if I know one thing on this show – is that we are now one for two. We're batting 500 on saying this person is going to win the Heisman and then the next week they got absolutely backhanded. Yeah. Joe Burrow, correct. Kyle Trask, 
oh no, what happened? So yeah, I mean, I'm not making any prediction on this one. I mean, again, I mean, Kyle Trask played fine. He played fine, but Florida got to fill those damn stadiums. Now they have to win out for him to have a chance. Damn, Mullen's trying to kill people in order to win. That's all. I mean, that's all. That's all I'm going to get at. We don't know what have a chance is this year because the the way I mean, we could have a SEC a three loss SEC champion the way that these defenses are playing. That is true. That is very true. I mean, yeah. Hey, but you know who's not losing this week? Vanderbilt. Oh, yeah, because there's not playing. Vanderbilt, Missouri is postponed due to a positive test on the Commodores football team. Um, don't know what Vanderbilt's doing this year, but, yeah, that's where they're currently at. They lost 41-7 to to South Carolina, if nobody caught After that. losing 41-7 to in back-to-back games, Derek Mason was at a bar, like, sneeze on me. We <laughs> so, are great. Uh, Vanderbilt's uh, not having a great time. I was wondering if Vanderbilt would be good at football. A long time. Well, they went to a bowl game that one time. Well, they had uh, James Franklin. They just need to poach another coach and then be able to ship him to the Big Ten. And so then I, I remember, I remember last terrible fourth down play. Last year they had that running back where ESPN released an article like, "Does Vanderbilt have a Heisman contender?" And then like they killed his chances right there. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about you want to talk about a bad coach? Is is Derek Mason the Adam Gase of college football? I think any coach Vanderbilt hires will be the Adam Gates of college football. I think any coach Vandy had would be in the exact same situation. Well, I mean, I mean, James Franklin was not a bad coach. I mean, yeah, and the best he could do was the Birmingham Bowl. So that's true. I feel like you 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 you're playing with a stacked deck if you're if you're the Commodores coach. Yeah, it's not I mean, like it, it it's not the, like you're in a the, great position with Vanderbilt. It was actually the Compass Bowl. Come on, let's uh, not the, the Birmingham Jared Bowl. Bowl. That but one still, year, I mean, the Birmingham Bowl was the Jared's Bowl, and I was happy, and they took it away. <laughs> who, 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 who's the sponsor for the Birmingham Bowl now? I think it changed again. I have no idea. It, it may, be, uh, it may it just be, be the Birmingham Bowl now. Question mark, question mark, question mark right now, because they're not sure if it's happening. I remember when the Dollar General Bowl just turned into the Mobile Bowl, and then it got a, like a sponsor two weeks out from the game or something it's like that. It's the Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl. Ugh. Well... Uh, we'll, Remember we'll, the GoDaddy Bowl that lasted like a year, I feel like? Well, we'll, we'll, let him, we'll, we'll, we'll at least have a new not terrible venue in the next year. So that'll That's be exciting. True. Uh, what was I about to say? I was about to say something about... Oh, you know who the Adam Gates of college football actually is? Tom Herman. I was say Clay Helton, but yeah, we could say Tom Herman as well. Yeah. Oh, actually, okay, so I saw something. Um, This reminds... Speaking of bad coaches or... Apparently back there. I saw something yesterday, and I wanted to share with you guys and see what you think. So it's a post on Instagram by Elite College Football, and the post said this. The post said... We're waiting. It said, 2019 LSU equals 2010 Auburn. Generational quarterback, innovative offensive coordinator, vast majority of both teams' production left, and very average head coach that benefited from it, and the team fell off the year after. Is that accurate? I've also been seeing posts like that, Alex. I don't think so. I think 2010 Auburn was – or 2011 Auburn was, like, legitimately bad, and Gene Chizik was legitimately not that good. I think this is an overreaction to LSU being one and two. I think Coach O is a very good recruiter and a a, a pretty good coach – but I just think the the lack of talent is the only major similarity I see because at LSU was not able to to reload like they would have liked to, uh, mostly because they had so much talent leaving at once. So I, I, I see similarities in that. Yes, you're the defending national champion. You let, lost your Heisman winning quarterback, and now you're having a down year. But uh, I think. I mean, it, it's similar in that sense, but I don't see it as a exact carbon copy. I mean, they're, they're, it suffers from some of the same symptoms, but I, I don't see it being the exact same situation. I don't think Coach O is going to get ca- canned in two years. Well, time let's out. let's time remember out. that time 2011 time time Auburn. Out. Time out, time out. I got some breaking news. Breaking and news. And for this breaking news, we're heading over to Portugal. For Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes. Yeah, Richard Mar. 
Cristiano Ronaldo has COVID. Back to arguing about 2011 Auburn and 2019 LSU. I was going to say, Jack, technically 2011 Auburn actually didn't fall off a cliff. They were 8-5 and five that year. Oh, no, that, that, that's falling off a cliff, though. If you were national champions, then went 8-5. But 2011 Auburn, and again, I mean, you talk about losing talent. They lost all of their receivers. They uh, were left with Barrett Trotter, at quarterback. Who they Don't remind hurt. me. They lost most of their defense, including their best defensive player. Now, I mean, my issue is I think people are freaking out about Coach O at – USC and LSU when he he more or less took over for coaches that failed to utilize that talent but people forget that coach O at Ole Miss was terrible now it's not impossible for a coach I mean, to you know get better Ole Miss but he was very bad at um Ole Miss and last year he had probably the two best coordinators in college football Dave Aranda and Joe Brady he now doesn't have those so is Joe Brady gonna be the head coach in three years I mean honestly it's yeah, not the craziest idea. Problem is he's in the NFL already, so it's hard to get him back. Right. Which is the, that's the one difficult thing because he's already taken the next step. So he may be on track for an NFL head coaching job, if anything. But that's scary. Scary thought. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like what you're saying. I, I just, I think Coach O is a very good recruiter. Um, I would agree with that big, completely. I think that's something Gene Chizik did not have. That's true because Gene that's Chizik true. had two years after the he, fact and. There was no He's going to be able to reload in a way that Chiswick was not able to. That's true. I, I also think that the the 2010 Auburn team was a lot more a Cam Newton willing them to victory, pulling everybody. Yes. Well, I think, yes, Joe Burrow is, of course, very good. But, uh, I mean, we're looking at Justin Jefferson, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Everyone that was on that LSU team is going gangbusters in the NFL right now. That is so true. That is not – you cannot say the same for – Oh, I mean, who, who remembers the illustrious NFL career of Sammy Coates? He had a few good games with the Steelers back in the day. I thought he was going to pop. I thought he was going to pop up with the Steelers. I was excited, but we got like three we back got to back. Now. Yeah, like three games back to back where he did freaking insane. That's true. That's true. Sucked. I would say that's um, like every Auburn wide receiver though. Like Darius Slayton's like the only like Auburn wide receiver doing well right now. There was say, yeah, like, I mean, there was Duke Williams for like a game and a half, and then he fell off. I think he's still on the Bills squad. Oh, nobody he got knows. Cut for no reason. I'm I'm not happy about that. Oh, well there you I go. I mean, okay, but here's here's a question that I saw after that is so who would you pick in a, in a one on one matchup, 2010 Auburn or 2019 LSU? 2019 LSU, easy. Yeah, I pick 2010 Auburn. Uh, I think what Jack was saying about how the team had more talent. I mean, no, yeah. no, they, the team does have more talent, but uh, but I'm I'm counting on the fact that LSU's defense was so bad that they wouldn't have anything to stop Cam, and Nick Fairley would have killed Joe Burrow by the halftime. So there's... I think 2010 Auburn won about six games by three points, including I think Kentucky and Mississippi State, and 2019 LSU destroyed everyone except Auburn. So. I'll just I'll just take apples to apples. Twenty nineteen LSU. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, and you're you're very likely correct. I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to make sure I get this correct before I say it. Uh oh. What? Jared's giving up for a hot take, everybody. Uh, it's not a hot take because my my take's not changing. Hopefully, the next NCAA game has a greatest teams ever mode where we can find oh, find out. Oh, that would answer. be so much fun. Also, um, the, old, the old head Nebraska fans can finally watch their 1972 team get smoked by the 08 Canes or whatever. <laughs> uh, the Rockets are interviewing Jeff Van Gundy on Wednesday. Good. You would Let's go, what? Jeff. The better the Van Gundy brothers. No, I was just going to say that, yeah, I picked 2019 LSU over 2010 Auburn any day because, I mean, Thanks. taking college football's best offense they've ever seen against Auburn, I mean – who had a great offense and had a great defense, but going up against the best offense ever. And well, let's not let's not get it twisted. Auburn's 2010 defense was awful. They had a good defensive player. They 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 had a great defensive they, line. Much there were like, ten other guys on the field. Yeah, no, I mean their defensive line was great, and they had some heavy hitters. But man, they couldn't cover me. That's, I mean, that's was, surprising. No, I mean, I mean, really, like, like. Um, they made they made Tyler Wilson and Ryan Mallett look like Heisman contenders for a game. Look, don't you besmirk the name of Ryan Mallett. 
He did. His I mean, best. I will. He did his best. Heck, really the only reason they won some of those games is because Nick Fairley tried to kill half the quarterbacks they played. What were uh, you guys doing the research? Nothing. It was nothing. No, say it. No, it was nothing. Jared. Uh, so after Houston played the first game of the season, thank goodness, right? Uh, Baylor is now shut down. So the state of Texas is just playing hot potato with uh, not playing games. Dan Mullen clearly wants part of that. Baylor has 28 cases. 28! It is spread throughout that team. And they're not playing this week. They're not playing next week. I can't imagine they're playing two weeks from now, to be quite honest. Uh, so Baylor is halting everything right now. And uh, the Big 12, Iowa State, is ripe for the picking now. Just watch out. If I, I'm telling you, if Iowa State wins the conference at 9-1 with their one loss being to Louisiana, I'm going to lose it. Louisiana, rank them. I think they're ranked. They didn't like 20 or ranked. something. Rank them. They won't be ranked for long when the, when the Pac-12 shows up and then bows out after two they weeks. Hey, they won't be ranked for long when they play Coastal Carolina on Wednesday and lose. They're playing on Wednesday? Yeah. When does the MAC come back? Uh, way late. Somebody tell me when the MAC comes back and then I'll when is I'll, the I'll whack? Know. When does the whack start? When we buy the conference. Okay. I'm just making sure. Uh, let's see. Look for any other college football news. Uh, obviously, Georgia Alabama is the biggest game of the weekend, but I'm not going to tell you that. Although Alabama is currently favored by six points, which mm. I think is fair. I mean, just because Georgia, despite everything that we've seen from them, they show a consistent lack of ability to beat Bama lately. I don't remember the, la- the last time. I don't. Remember, when was the last time? I'm going to Google that. The Alabama Georgia series. 2006. 2006. Good work. That was the last time an SEC East team beat Bama. Last time an SEC East team beat in, Bama? In, in Brighton. There you go. In what? In Brighton. In Brighton. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, that, makes, that makes sense. Because 2010 South Carolina was, the, also, yeah. was the last time an SEC East team won, which is still 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, where were you 10 years ago? That's the last time I've been lost for SEC East team. I was 14. I was watching that game. I remember that game. Great game. Alex Wait, when South diapers. Carolina beat, or when Georgia beat Alabama? When Georgia beat Alabama? I thought you were saying, were you watching when South Carolina beat Bama or when Georgia did? I was saying South Carolina beating Bama because I was 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah. That was easier huh? math for me to do. If we're going back even further, I was 10 the last time Georgia beat uh, Alabama in, in 06. And let's not forget the following year, Alabama then went up 31 to nothing on Georgia during their blackout game. Rest in peace to blackout. And then who can forget the 2012 game when Mark Rick forgot what time was? Gotta love that one. 2015 game in the rain. That one National, was cha- National Championship. Yep. And then... The Kirby Smart fake punt in the SEC Championship. Oh, God. That... That single-handedly sent Justin Fields to the Big Ten. Man's was like, I'm out of here. I'm over it. Let me go. I'd do it, too. You know, speaking of uh, speaking of, I'd do it again, right? The Vikings, Mike Zimmer, after uh, the Sunday Night Football fiasco where the Vikings went for it on fourth and one, and uh, then they didn't get it, and Seahawks drove down the field, uh, he said that he'd do it again. So that man's certifiably crazy. I like that call. That was a good call. Kick the field goal. It would be no, a lot easier. Kick the, kick the field goal, Seahawks tie anyway. I mean, if you give if you give the ball to Russell Wilson in overtime, that's, that's, that's game. I'd rather give Russell Wilson the ball with a chance to tie than with a chance to win. It's never never let never let Russell Wilson get the ball if he has a chance to it's win. It's effectively the same. It's not. I gotta get it's, it's get one yard or lose. They didn't get the one yard, so they lost. It was going to happen guys. no matter what. Um, break, break news report right now. I just, I just got the update. Apparently, the NCAA is beginning to craft name, image, and likeness legislation with hopes for quick adoption this week. This will, allow, this would aim to allow athletes to be compensated for such rights for the first time in history. So, well, you heard it here first, folks. NCAA football games are coming back. That's what I got from that information. Correct. So, I can't wait until that, but. 
that'll end the show for today. Thank you, Davis, Alex, and Jack, for joining me on the show. Uh, make sure that you catch the Braves tonight as they get, try to go up 2-0. And also, shout out to Auburn Soccer. They are back, and they'll be playing tonight against Ole Miss. That game will be on WGL 91.1 FM. That game is at 4 Central, so a 402 first kick. Make sure you catch that on Weagle as uh, it'll be a lot of fun to have the team back. So, for Davis Carroll, Alex Houston, and Jack Hart, I'm Jared Dote saying thank you so much for watching. Let's get extra point here on WGL 91.1 FM and WEGLFM.com. <laughs>